Tubers, Tibets, and my favorite group, crazy people, can the Philippines make a person both richer and smarter is the topic. Um, I'm going to do my level best to explain why I think it can, and I'll be really curious to see what you have to say about it in the comment section. All right, here comes my video. So, does moving to the Philippines have the ability to make you a richer and smarter human being? I think it does, and I'm going to lay out my reasons why. Um, the first part are intangibles. And so, what I mean by that is, and I'm going to, in this video, I'm going to do my best just to refer to myself. And I'm going to refer to Social Security because that's what I'm on. I know many of you may out there may have different programs, 401ks and whatnot. And I'm also only going to stick to the Philippines, no other countries. So, because that's what I can speak about, I receive a Social Security check and I live in the Philippines now for six years. So, I feel like I'm competent enough to speak on both of these. Here we go. The intangibles. I, once you get off the plane, once I got off the plane and came over here and got myself settled in, one thing that I noticed was a dynamic of, for me and for many, many other people that I encountered from day one to last night is the notion of keeping up with the Joneses. That notion over here tends to dissipate and dilute very, very quickly across all social stratuses. Um, it, it is something that I think comes number one with age. If we're talking about retirees on Social Security, we're talking about someone that's 62 or older. And I think with that level of maturity, age comes wisdom. And through that wisdom, the, keeping up with the Joneses, having the same kind of car or a bigger house or a boat in the front yard and all that, many of us have been there and we have done that. And we got the credit card bill to prove it. <laughs> Not the t-shirt. And after going through all that, to have all this stuff and do all these things and throw the big parties and drive the nice car and wah, 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 wah. I think that our level of maturity has just reached a point where we look back on it and say that really wasn't worth the time, the money, or the effort. I no longer own any of those things <laughs> that are in the past. They were bright and shiny and pretty, and I thought I had to have them when I saw them. But right now, here I sit. I don't have any of them, and it doesn't make a hill of beans of difference. So there is a maturity level that we come upon where we realize finally, most of us, I hope, that less is more. That really, if we have our health and we have a, 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 a healthy outlook, um, we're, we're fairly content, we have shelter, we have food, we have the basics covered, plus a little extras, we're cool. So keeping up with the Joneses pretty much goes out the window. As an example, um, I can be sitting next to and have sat next to my fair share of guys that are multimillionaires. And if I didn't know it because I knew it, I wouldn't be able to tell. A lot of these guys are the millionaires next door. They keep a very low profile. They live very simple lives. That's why they're millionaires. And they're not showy. They don't showboat. Uh, they're not bragging. They're just going through. And you know what? He's sitting in the same seat as me. He's drinking the same cup of coffee as I am. We're on equal footing. We're enjoying the same conversation with one another. And so his net worth, I could give less about. And if on the other side of the fence, if I'm sitting with someone that's a little less fortunate than me, the same thing applies. 
he's still sitting in the same chair. We're still drinking the same cup of coffee. We're still talking about the same topic and enjoying one another's company. So this whole impress me, impress you with my stuff pretty much goes right out the window. And to put a cherry on top of that, <laughs> it's actually gone in reverse. Um, more too often, I see people driving by in like $80,000 Ford Raptors. Um, some people drive a Porsche or a $100,000 Mercedes every blue moon. Not often, but I see them often enough buzzing around, sleepy little Dumaguete here. And I think to myself, that guy's an idiot. <laughs> First of all, you can never get past 40 miles an hour anywhere you go. Um, what do you need all that horsepower? Why do you need all that bling um, for this traffic, for this, the amount of parking spaces that are available, the difficulty it is in maneuvering on these narrow little streets, and really the car or the truck that used to kind of make me envious and maybe drool a little bit like man I, i'd look good in that porsche or that gtr Whew, i'd love to have one of those go screaming around down malibu but out here it's actually the opposite where you pretty much just admire the guy that's got the world's smallest car that he could buy or just a simple little motorbike and when someone pulls up, if 10 guys come to meet one another and, and shoot the breeze at one of the local coffee shops, no one really pays attention to what they show up in or goes out and oohs and ahs over their bike, unless it's brand new and they want to show it to you, uh, or their car, or whether they took a trike. No one cares. They're not trying to keep up with the Joneses. No one's trying to impress anyone. So I think that that makes you richer, and I think that that makes you smarter. Um, so another one that is a big, big player over here that will keep more money in your pocket and make you richer is the lack of debit and credit card usage. I can remember that I used to go to the ATM every blue moon at my bank, and I think I hit a button that's called, I think it was like quick cash or something like that. And it would spit out 40 bucks. And I'd put that 40 bucks in my wallet. And sometimes I'd have that 40 bucks for over a month. Because no matter where I went, I just found it was easier, quicker, and more convenient just to take my debit card or credit card, take your, you know, pick your poison, and swipe it or just even tap it and bang transactions done, you get a receipt, you grab your stuff, and you go. When I would go in for gasoline in the States, um, I had to go inside to pay. And inside to pay, there was all these lovely temptations available to me. You know, potato chips, <laughs> a bunch of crap I didn't need. And there might even be like a little thing of deodorant that I was out of. And instead of going to the dollar store and being smart and buying my deodorant, uh, I said, well, what the hell, I'm here. I'll just go ahead and get it. I'll just toss it on the credit card. So that dollar deodorant was now $6.69 there at the a.m. p.m., along with the gas, bag of chips, and, you know, a Slurpee or whatever. And the bill went from $40 to $58.95, and I didn't feel any pain and so impulse purchases were very, very simple for me to make. And if I was walking along and I'm not a big shopper, I'm not a big clothes hound or any of that, never have been. But wherever I went, if I did see something that caught my eye and I thought, I'd like to have that or I deserve that, I would just throw the old credit card down and say, yeah, I'll just deal with it later. <laughs> give me those shoes or give me that shirt or whatever it was, and I would take it home. This, for all intents and purposes, with the exception of the big malls and the big supermarkets, is a cash society. And there is a level of, I don't want to call it pain, but there is a much more acute level of awareness of how much you've got in your wallet. Remember that 40 bucks? And... 
it's now it's leaving your wallet and you're either paying for your meal or your groceries or your sundries or whatever it might be. And you can see in your wallet, in my case, um, it dwindling and going down and going down. And you know how much you've got in reserve. And oh, I do. And I keep mental notes. Am I staying on budget here? Is this, is this cool? I played a game one time where I said, I'm going to live on $1,000 this month. And I've said it before a hundred times when I, this is not a budget video, but for, in my budget videos, I've always explained that I spend about 1500 bucks a month. I receive more than $1,500 a month. And I'm going to get into those numbers in a few minutes, but I want to just stay on track with this one thought is when I played the thousand dollar game, I got my pesos and I set aside my rent. I set aside what was going to be my electric and my fixed expenses, about $600, $700, whatever it came to that month. And I then took the remaining amount of money and divided it by the amount of days that I had left until I came into another paycheck or in this case, a social security check. And so for this conversation, we'll say it was a thousand pesos a day. Well, that day I would put a thousand pesos in my wallet and leave the house. And if I spent it, I went home. If I didn't spend it all the next day, I would put another thousand pesos in because that was allotted. And now I had maybe 1300 pesos or 1500 pesos and on and on it went. Did I cut back on a lot of unnecessary stuff? Absolutely. Did I eat at home more? Absolutely. But it was just kind of a fun little game that I played with myself. And I actually pulled it off twice, living here on $1,000 a month. I'm not sure with inflation that I could pull that off today. It would probably be closer to 1200 1250 All right. So we're looking at that. And now I wanted to look at some numbers with you. So I called up my friends over at Google, the man buns wearing the skinny jeans, and I Googled all kinds of information and I want to talk about averages. So I asked Google's uh, man buns, what is the average social security check? And it to Google told me it was $1,693. So, I'm going to use $1,700 because I'm going to round up because I'm lazy. And then I'm going to still use the benchmark of a budget of $1,500, which has primarily been my budget up until recently. It has gone up, but that's another video. So using that number, we have $1,700 coming in. We have $1,500 going out. So what do you do? You get to save how much? $200. And I've got some notes. Year number one, you're going to save 24, or I'm going to save $2,400. And then I checked out the next year, there was what's called a COLA increase on the Social Security. So, 17, so the first year, I started in 2017, 2018, the COLA adjustment was 2.2%. Eight percent, which gave me a raise of forty-seven dollars. So now I've got seventeen forty-seven coming in, and the fifteen hundred is remaining static. So on year number two, I'm going to have <laughs> two thousand nine hundred and sixty-four dollars that I've saved because it's gone up. The following year, twenty twenty. I get a 1.3 COLA adjustment, COLA being cost of living adjustment for Social Security. That was a whopping $33 because I was taking it off of the 1774. Remember, my, my number keeps going up, so the percentage is going to be off of a higher number. So off of 1774, 1 1.3% came out to $33. That gave me $1,797, which means I'm now saving $297 a, year, a month. 
which gave me $3,564 that year placed in savings. 2021, 5.9% COLA increase on the $1,797, $106. Now I'm getting $1,909. And that is $409 more. And in the fourth year, I'm now saving $4,900. And last but not least is 2022. We had the good raise. It was 8.7%. 8.7% of $1,909 is $166. So now income from the guy that was getting $1,700 five years later is now getting $2,075. $6,900 saved after 12 months for a grand total of $20,728 saved just off of staying in budget. Here's an interesting little statistic. I asked Google, how much money do Americans have in savings right now? Google told me that the savings average is $41,600. The savings median is $5,300. Average is in throwing in the billionaires and the millionaires. <coughs> Excuse me. The median <coughs> is taking into account those of all social status, those living at the poverty line or below, and the millionaires and the billionaires, everything. So the median is 5300 bucks is what an average American, the average Joe, the average guy like me, would or should have in their savings account. It's the median amount. Well, after five years, if you follow this little formula, you've got four times that amount. You've got 20,728. Now, granted, I didn't have any medical issues or any emergencies or any big wazoo stuff happen, knock on wood. But three years into my life here, I began to get monetized on my YouTube channel. I lived here for two years, didn't do anything about YouTube. On year number, at the end of year number two, the start of year number three, I started my channel. And it took 11 months before I got monetized and received my first check off of YouTube. And... My first check was probably 140 bucks, And so that just got thrown into savings. And for the last three years, that amount has gone up. As views have gone up, subscribers have gone up. And it just keeps increasing. And guess what? I have absolutely no desire to impress anybody. I have absolutely no desire to wear any bling or move into a bigger house. The biggest thing I ever bought since then was a car and that I paid cash for, but the car was 11,000. And remember I have 20,000 saved up plus anything from the YouTube. Now, when you come out here, are you going to start a YouTube channel? I doubt it, but there are side hustles that guys do all the time. You may set yourself up with a teaching online job prior to coming out here if you want to supplement your income. You may want to um, <clears throat> take on some sort of, uh, uh, pretty much it's just the online. Um, maybe you're, you're good at, at writing code or you, you've got some sort of ability as far as being able to do um, medical reviews and whatnot. I know there's all kinds of stuff that people do online over here. And you can work it at your own pace. So what else makes you richer and smarter? I think the real wealth is just the sense of accomplishment of going from being buried in credit card debt and mortgages and car payments and cable and all that. It just kind of gets eliminated over here. You don't have it all. You couldn't finance a car if you wanted to, unless you had a, a, a Filipino or a Filipina partner. So 
And if you did, you'd be paying ridiculous interest rates. So it sort of forces you to save for whatever it is that you want to buy. And that is simply a smarter way of doing business. You can wake up every morning and each day is your own. I can choose and probably one day out of the week, I look at my wife and I say, you know what? I don't feel like doing anything today except sitting right here on this stupid couch. <laughs> And she's cool with it. Sometimes she gets on her little scooter and runs off somewhere and hangs out with her sisters or her girlfriends or does whatever. But me, I just sit here and I'm as happy as a clam. I feel smarter because, number one, I'm operating on a much more positive uh, level. As far as I get a kick out of it and a sense of accomplishment watching my little savings account grow each month instead of stressing about where's the next check going to come from? How am I going to pay this bill? Oh my God, I forgot the car registration came in. That's 400 bucks I forgot about. I got to come up with. All that's gone. I'm smarter because I have the opportunity to meet a lot of smart people. And in America, I would go to work. I would go home, watch TV, didn't interact very much with people except at work, and that got old in a hurry. Um, here, I go out and I meet people, and not all of them are PhDs, but a lot of them are very intelligent, very witty, very funny, and I pick up a lot of knowledge just through osmosis by dealing with them. I was able to focus on my health out here. I was able to go on a a diet that lost 30 to 35 pounds just because I had the time. I wasn't stressed out. Uh, I was able to show some discipline there. I felt that that was a smart move to help improve my health. Um, I met my wife. Uh, when I came over here, I was kind of anti-woman. Uh, I was like, I just, I don't want anything to do with women. And over time, eventually that hardness in my heart and in my body and in my soul just kind of melted. And I became much more open and much more receptive and never rushed into anything uh, as far as a relationship goes. Courted my wife, if you will, for four years and then we got married. And I think that was smart. Not, you know, fools rush in. And I've learned over here just to slow down, to take it easy, enjoy watching my savings account grow, um, my knowledge grow. I have the opportunity to read the books that I always wanted to read, um, educate myself a little bit via YouTube or just online classes. There is a plethora of stuff that will keep a guy going over here. So I'll end it on that. Um, there's a sense of accomplishment. There's a sense of a safety net. There is a sense of peace. And I don't feel like I need to compete with anybody other than myself. And every time that I save Five dollars or five hundred dollars, I get to look up and say, I won. All right, kids, I'll see you in the next video.